Okay, tubers, so here's the plan. Big cob LED light. I'm going to have conduit, electrical conduit, connector fittings just to make this frame. I'm going to use these little conduit saddles with um, some silicon adhesive over the back of each panel and wire it all up accordingly. And uh, I'm thinking about putting the pulse width modulation control on. Uh, I have the electronics to do this one. I could smash together something out of a scooter for this one. Uh, and that would give me uh, a really powerful color temperature control by adjusting the bias on how much light goes to it, or how much uh, power goes to each one. Here's a frame assembled from. Uh, Conduit, electrical conduit. Got the thicker stuff, the orange stuff is thicker. Gives it a bit more rigidity. I haven't glued it yet. So these saddles, I'm just lining up the last one here. They're a bit wonky, sort of pressed metal, so rather than getting it wrong and thinking that they're straight, I've mounted each one to the sat to a, a piece eyeball that's straightness and left each one there. I'm going to use neutral cure silicon. Uh, you don't want acetic cure silicon anywhere near electronics. And, um, probably be 12 hours for the silicon to dry and then I can pop each panel. Because that's not glued I'll just pop them apart, slide them on, do the wiring. Just cleaning up the uh, Overshoots here with the baby wipe. Seems to be alright picking it up. Looks pretty good. It's holding well. And the important thing is that'll slip under there. Uh, soldering these on has been a bit tricky. It's pretty heavy wire. There's a lot of heat sinking ability of the, the material so it's pulling a lot of heat uh, you need an, at least an 80 watt iron to do the job and I found that the, uh, the insulation is starting to melt as the job gets hot enough to flow the solder so this is peeling back making a crappy looking job of it and uh, because I need a lot of heat um, yeah, it's not much fun and these will peel back around when you take the iron off it so I've got to heat it, melt it, then hold it in place with something cold. But, as they say, onwards and upwards or something like that. Uh, I'll only show you the soldering on one. You don't need to see all seven. You probably don't need to see any of my body soldering, but for the sake of continuity, so, I've got that covered with some glad wrap, we call it in Australia, in America they call it saran. Uh, just keeping the iron nicely tinned. Oops, sorry about the wobble. Really stretch that so it's tight. And it goes past the halfway mark. Line it up for the hole. Through. Hold it over. And we're ready to 
hold it in place with something cold. Okay, two more to go. Where's my pieces? One. Got this JCAR PWM, it's a 20 amp module, uh, and that'll run three of the lights because uh, they pull up to a bit over six amps each, six by three. We're right in the 20 amp range. You know, that'll give me full color temperature control by dialing down the blue. Um, I'd like to have something else to control the warm whites. Uh, however, at this point, I might just put a dropping diode or something there that brings it down to about 11 and a half volts. Uh, there's a really good Migro video on the subject of these uh, cob panels, and I'll link in the description uh, if you want to know about uh, using them as grow lights. Uh, yeah, Migro. It's a really good review of these, testing the uh, the par strength and stuff like that. I'm setting it up with um, the PWM running all of them. Since the power supply is only capable of 20 amps, and since running these things at a lower amperage will negate the, any requirement for heat sinking, um, this is simplifying everything. I didn't think it would be worth showing you all the fiddling around joining up. I mean, it's just basically parallel circuit. Um, I just made sure I've used nice heavy wire to deliver to the point where it breaks out to run. Um, you know, we're breaking out from here. Uh, this is 15 amp. This is 25 amp. Uh, yeah. And they're not all hooked up yet, but turn it on and show you what we've got so far um, so they're the cool white you've got a lot of strobing there and that's purely because uh, this thing is running with uh, pulse width modulation um, and I can also with this PWM I can adjust low voltage dropout and frequency I don't recall what the other one is there I've got some paperwork here that tells me what it is um, I'll just show you dialing it down oh that's some terrible terrible uh, striving if you were using this as a video light and you didn't want the strobing, you just put a great big capacitor on there and you'd be able to um, stop that happening. I found my little DSO Nano that's been uh, sitting around for quite some years and that will give me the opportunity to find out what frequency this thing's set at and if I want to change it. Just on that pot now, and I'm just going to use the stroboscoping to to look at that. It's easier than trying to hold the oscilloscope probes on because I don't have um, 
Look at that. Slide down to a really smooth rolling. And going back the other way. Oh, that's neat. There should be a spot there where it will stop altogether. Reminds me of tuning an old television. And your vertical and horizontal. And if we change the pulse width now, you should be able to see the thickness of that band get thicker and thinner. Hmm, can't even see it now. There you go. Hmm. Okay, there it is. It's running at a very low current at the moment. The PWM's turned right down. Um, I don't have any 20 amp fuses, so I don't really want to go blowing. Because um, if I dial it up, they should draw enough current to um, pop the fuse. There's a 20 amp fuse in the PWM. Uh, this thing will peak at 30 for a short time. But, um, yeah. So I suppose what I really need to do now is measure the current. And I can't remember where my clamp meter is. Damn it, this one only measures AC. If I had more 20 amp fuses, that would be the trick. I'd just dial it up till it pops and wind it back a bit. I suppose the other thing to consider is um, the heat they're going to run at, because they're not heat synced. And the review I saw on Migro, uh, they were running them about two and a half amps. So what, two and a half by seven? Half, half of seven, three and a half, fourteen, seventeen. Yeah, so seventeen, a bit over seventeen amps. Should be so close to twenty. Yeah. Maybe I'll just dial it up a bit and see how they feel. I can hear a hum, I'm not sure if it's from the PWM or from the plates themselves. There's nothing coming off the plate. I can't hear it now. The pulse width is wide enough to keep it quiet. I'll just let them run for a while and see what they get. Certainly a lot of light. Here's the roof, it's lighting. As if I measure the current going to one, I can times that by seven. It's weird, I'll just turn them off. Probably that low voltage cutout. Turn the low voltage cut out and yeah, it just comes straight on. It's a bit of a load, you can really hear it pulling on that transformer. Let's find a multimeter that doesn't have the uh, amps fuse blown. Uh, function. I 
I've just shortened this wire here to tidy things up while I'm doing zip ties and that's given me a perfect opportunity to hook that up and measure a single panel with uh, just uh, that way I won't you know because none of the none of these multimeters will do more than 10 amps and to do uh, DC clamp meter connections uh, testing you need a, a better meter than the clamp meter that I've had over the years That looks all right. Whoa. Yeah, that's nice. That's like daylight. Like having a high bay in your shed. That's awesome. I'm really happy with that. Let's go and step on the other side of it. So there it is, my awesome shed light, using these $15, 70,000 lumen I think they said they are, um, obviously they're not running that bright with um, the reduced current, but it's awesome. Thanks for watching, don't forget to uh, ask any questions if you've got any questions. Um, comments, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, ring the bell if you're a new subscriber.